Welcome to the parish of Lexton, to St Leonard's Rectory for our simple liturgy for uh, Good Friday. I'm hoping that you might perhaps have to hand uh, a candle. And before we begin, I shall light our candle and then we'll gather ourselves for worship on this very significant day in the church year. The order of service for this particular act of worship can be found earlier on in our Facebook feed uh, for today. Let us pray. Almighty Father, look with mercy on this your family, for which our Lord Jesus Christ was content to be betrayed and given up into the hands of sinners and to suffer death upon the cross who is alive and glorified with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen.
Psalm 22, verses 1 to 11. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me, and are so far from my salvation, from the words of my distress? O oh my God, I cry in the daytime, but you do not answer. Yet by night also, but I find no rest. Yet you are the Holy One, enthroned upon the praises of Israel. Our forebears trusted in you. They trusted and you delivered them. They cried out to you and were delivered. They put their trust in you and were not confounded. But as for me, I am a worm and no man, scorned by all and despised by the people. All who see me laugh me to scorn. They curl their lips and wag their heads, saying, He trusted in the Lord. Let him deliver him. Let him deliver him if he delights in him. But it is you that took me out of the womb and laid me safe upon my mother's breast. On you was I cast ever since I was born. You were my God even from my mother's womb. Be not far from me, for trouble is near at hand and there is none to help. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Amen. Passion of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to John. Then Pilate took Jesus and had him flogged, and the soldiers wove a crown of thorns and put it on his head, and they dressed him in a purple robe. They kept coming up to him, saying, Hail, Hail King, King of, of the, the Jews, and striking him on the face. Pilate went out again and said to them, Look, I am bringing him out to you to let you know that I find no case against him. So Jesus came out, wearing the crown of thorns and the purple robe. Pilate said to them, Here is the man. When the chief priests and the police saw him, they shouted, Crucify him! Crucify him! Pilate said to them, Take him yourselves and crucify him. I find no case against him. The Jews answered him, We have a law, and according to that law he ought to die, because he has claimed to be the Son of God. Now when Pilate heard this, he was more afraid than ever. He entered the headquarters again and asked Jesus, Where are you from? But Jesus gave him no answer. Pilate therefore said to him, Do you refuse to speak to me? Do you not know that I have the power to release you and power to crucify you? Jesus answered him, You would have no power over me unless it had been given to you from above. Therefore the one who handed me over to you is guilty of a greater sin. From then on, Pilate tried to release him, but the Jews cried out, If you release this man, you are no friend of the emperor. Everyone who claims to be a king sets himself against the emperor. When Pilate heard these words, he brought Jesus outside and sat on the judge's bench at a place called the Stone Pavement, or in Hebrew, Gavata. Now it was the day of preparation for the Passover, and it was about noon. Pilate said to the Jews, here is your king. They cried out, Away, Away with, with him! him. Away, Away with him! him. Crucify him. him! Pilate asked them, Shall I crucify your king? The chief priests answered, We have no king but the emperor. Then he handed him over to them to be crucified. So they took Jesus, and carrying the cross by himself, he went out to what is called the place of the skull, which in Hebrew is called Golgotha. There they crucified him, and with him two others, one on either side, with Jesus between them. Pilate also had an inscription written and put on the cross. It read, Jesus of Nazareth, the King of the Jews. Many of the Jews read this inscription, because the place where Jesus was crucified was near the city, and it was written in Hebrew, in Latin, and in Greek. Then the chief priests of the Jews said to Pilate, Do not write, write the, the King of the, of the Jews, Jews. But this man said, I am the king of the Jews. 
Pilate answered, What I have written, I have written. When the soldiers had crucified Jesus, they took his clothes and divided them into four parts, one for each soldier. They also took his tunic. Now the tunic was seamless, woven in one piece from the top. So they said to one another, Let, Let us not tear it, but cast lots for it, to, to see who will get it. it. This was to fulfil what the scripture says. They divided my clothes among themselves, and for my clothing they cast lots. And this is what the soldiers did. Meanwhile, standing near the cross of Jesus were his mother and his mother's sister, Mary the wife of Clopas, and Mary Magdalene. When Jesus saw his mother and the disciple whom he loved standing beside her, he said to his mother, Woman, here is your son. Then he said to the disciple, Here is your mother. And from that hour, the disciple took her into his own home. After this, when Jesus knew that all was now finished, he said, in order to fulfil the scripture, I am thirsty. A jar full of sour wine was standing there. So they put a sponge full of the wine on a branch of hyssop and held it to his mouth. When Jesus had received the wine, he said, It is finished. Then he bowed his head and gave up his spirit. This is the passion of the Lord. It is finished, but it is not the end. Well, of course, by the normal standards, uh, Good Friday should have been the end of the story of Jesus. And as we've just heard, even Jesus himself says it is finished as he died. And if it was the end of the story, it would have been a very sad and tragic story. In fact, a story so tragic and so sad, I suspect that we would still be telling the story anyway, but one as a perfect example of failure. Jesus, uh, from hero to zero uh, in less than a week. The triumph of Palm Sunday turns to the failure of Good Friday. The cries of triumph turn to the cries of crucify him in just six days. And it was exactly the same people who were making those two different cries. In between those times, Jesus proves himself to be a thorn in the side of everyone in authority. All the religious and political leaders are really keen to be shot of him. He lives through unbelievable unfairness and tragedy. He is even betrayed by his friends. He suffers. He dies. It's not a, a fall from grace. It's a plunge into the depths of failure and brokenness. And so today, as we remember Good Friday, his death on the cross, we often shed many tears. I personally find it very sad to think of what happened to the Son of God on that day and on those days leading up to that point. But while we weep, we do so knowing that this failure accomplished. We know that Jesus' death on the cross brought about the most incredible and the most beautiful and the most hopeful thing that ever happened. But we wait to celebrate that on Easter Sunday. And it's important for us to note that we've received a tradition where we wait. We wait to celebrate that on Sunday. And today we meditate on what the cross means for all people at all times. So today the story of Jesus hasn't concluded. It's actually reached its, its heart. 
What has concluded was the era when sin and death had the final say on human life. And so to Christians, lament, being sorry and sad about things, should always be mixed with praise, with thanksgiving to God. And actually, if we listen carefully to what Jesus says in the accounts of his death, we see something of a hint that that is what is intended. As he dies, he quotes Psalm 22. We've heard it today as well. It's an ancient song from the Old Testament. The song starts in lament, in sadness, despair. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me, cries Jesus. And for many people, there are and will be times when we might feel like crying out with those same words. And when we do, we cry out with the Son of God. And when we do, we should also remember how that particular psalm, that particular song ends. It ends in hope and praise and thanksgiving. It is you that took me out of the womb and laid me safe upon my mother's breath. On you was I cast ever since I was born. You are my God, even from my mother's womb. So today we lament. We lament as Jesus, our friend, dies. But we lament knowing that his story isn't finished. The song is not done. And so come back on Sunday, not to the rectory, but to church or online. Come back and listen for the next bit of the story, the next bit of the song, so beautiful, so hopeful, so perfect, that it will colour every aspect of our lives. And if you want to see a, a picture picture of what all this might mean, we'll keep an eye on our cairn, our Lexton cairn. There have been people laying decorated stones uh, for weeks to lament, to remember those they love and miss, to lament the sad things that have happened in the time. Those stones have been left, just as all sad things are left, at the foot of Jesus's cross, on Good Friday. But something is going to happen to those stones. They're going to be transformed. So come and see on Easter morn. It is finished, but it is not the end. This is the wood of the cross, on which hung the Saviour of the world. Come, Come let, let us, us worship. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you. Because, because by your holy cross you have redeemed, redeemed the world. This is the wood of the cross, on which hung the Saviour of the world. Come, Come let, let us worship. O Saviour of the world, who by your cross and precious blood have redeemed us. Save us and help us, we humbly pray.
God sent his son into the world, not to condemn the world, but that the world might be saved through him. Therefore we pray to our Heavenly Father for people everywhere according to their needs. Let us pray for the Church of God throughout the world, for unity in faith, in witness and in service, for all Christians, for those who are mocked and persecuted for their faith, that God will confirm his church in faith Increase it in love and preserve it in peace. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Almighty and everlasting God, by whose spirit the whole body of the church is governed and sanctified, hear our prayer, which we offer for all your faithful people, that in their calling and service, they may serve you in holiness and truth to the glory of your name through our Lord and Saviour Jesus Christ. Amen. Let us pray for the nations of the world and their leaders, for Elizabeth our Queen and for Parliament, for all who work in public office, for all who strive for justice and reconciliation, that by God's help the world may live in peace and freedom. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Gracious God and Father, who wants us to know peace, turn our hearts and the hearts of all back to you, so that by the power of your Spirit, peace which is founded on justice may be established throughout the world through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We pray for God's ancient people, the Jews, the first to hear his word, for greater understanding between Christian and Jew, for the removal of our blindness and bitterness of heart, for an end to all forms of anti-Semitism, that God will grant us to be faithful to his covenant and to grow in the love of his name. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Lord God of Abraham, Bless the children of your covenant, both Jew and Christian. Take from us all blindness and bitterness of heart and hasten the coming of your kingdom when the Gentiles shall be gathered in, all Israel shall be saved and we shall dwell together in mutual love and peace under the one God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Let us pray for those who have not heard the message of salvation, for all who have lost faith, for those who persecute those who follow Christ, for all who do not know the faith of Christ crucified, that God will open their hearts to him. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Merciful God, creator of all the people of the earth, of compassion on all who do not know you, and by the preaching of your gospel with grace and power, gather them into the one fold of the one shepherd, Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray for all those who suffer, for those who are deprived and oppressed, for all who are sick, for those in darkness, in doubt and in despair, in loneliness and in fear, for prisoners, captives and refugees, for the victims of false accusations and violence, for all at the point of death and those who watch beside them, that God in his mercy will sustain them with the knowledge of his love. Lord, hear us. 
Lord, graciously hear us. Almighty and everlasting God, the comfort of the sad, the strength of those who suffer, hear the prayers of your children who cry out of any trouble. And to every distressed soul grant mercy, relief and refreshment through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us commend ourselves and all God's children to his unfailing love and pray for the grace of a holy life that with all who have died in the peace of Christ we may come to the fullness of eternal life and the joy of the resurrection. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. The God of unchangeable power and eternal light, look favourably on your whole church, that wonderful and sacred mystery, and by the tranquil operation of your perpetual providence, carry out the work of our salvation. And let the whole world feel and see that things which were cast down are being raised up, and things which had grown old are being made new, and that all things are returning to perfection through him from whom they took their origin, even Jesus Christ our Lord, who is alive, and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen.
standing at the foot of the cross, as our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of the living God, set your passion, cross and death between your judgment and our souls, now and in the hour of our death. Grant mercy and grace to the living, rest to the departed, to your church peace and concord and to us sinners forgiveness and everlasting life and glory for with the father and the holy spirit you are alive and reign god now and forever amen, amen. 